Eagles Entertainment. Welcome, Eagles everywhere, to the Eagles Insider Podcast, presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro with you. The NFL Draft completed, and the Eagles have themselves 10 new draft picks. They signed 13 players after the draft, and they added one courtesy of the NFL's International Player Pathway Program. We'll get to that in just one moment. We're also going to hear from the father of Eagles first round draft pick Jalen Rager. His name, Monte Rager, and that name sounds familiar because he played for the Eagles. In the 2007 season, he actually had won a Super Bowl the season prior with the Indianapolis Colts. A good, solid, long NFL career. Monte Rager now sees his son enter the professional ranks. We'll hear from the proud Papa. Can you imagine the thrill of having your son taken in the first round of the NFL draft. We're going to find out just what it feels like in a moment. But first, we begin our Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group with the final word from Eagles General Manager Howie Roseman. A busy draft period. Four trades alone on the third day of the draft. And the Eagles are faster, more athletic, deeper, and they believe a better football team for the 2020 season and beyond. Since the draft, Roseman has been doing the media circuit, his final stop right here on the Eagles Insider Podcast. So without further ado, let's hear from Howie Roseman. Howie Roseman has been a man on the go through the 2020 NFL Draft and beyond, and now he makes his stop here with us. The Eagles Insider Podcast, Dave Spadaro with you. Howie, how are you? Uh, Let's start with a big picture here. What do you think you accomplished for the Philadelphia Eagles throughout that three-day weekend? Dave, it's like Monopoly. You know when you play Monopoly on this quarantine and you always kind of kind of come back to home? You know, uh, being with you is like coming back home. It's, uh, it's always where I start and where I end up, so thanks for having me. Um, you know, we went, we went into this draft weekend with an emphasis on, on getting good players, um, guys that we felt – fit into our culture, guys who would increase the athleticism and competition on our football team. And we wanted to get a bunch of those guys. You know, we didn't want to have another year where we came out with five picks. You know, we only had 10 total the last two years. And just uh, really excited about what we were do, able to do over the draft weekend and really the whole off season to address some things we really wanted to address, but with the right people to address them, so not just forcing them. How it seems to me that the two areas that you kind of have emphasized in this draft, and correct me if I'm wrong, speed, number one, and then you've put a lot of trust and a lot of faith in your coaching staff to develop these players. Is that a fair read? Well, you don't want to take speed and athleticism without also the traits to play the game. You know, um, someone jokingly sent, asked me if our next traffic was going to be Usain Bolt, and um, though as excited as I would be to have him on our football team, you know, you still want to have guys who have the skill set that you're looking for. So, you know, we wanted to be able to be faster at all levels. When you look at this league and where it's going on both offense and defense, it is a speed game and you want to be fast. And we talked a lot about it, about offense, but even defensively, you know, talking about these athletic quarterbacks, you know, the runners that we play in our division and, the explosiveness they have as well and and how smart these offense coordinators these play callers are just like coach peterson um and their ability to kind of find the weak areas of your defense and then roll howie you didn't have you say but the- you did add marquise goodwin and you totally overhauled the wide receiver position to a degree four wide receivers added this weekend so let's talk specifically about that group as you see it at this point. Yeah, we also have guys on, on our team still who've been successful for us. And, you know, we've talked a lot about our veteran receivers and Alshon and, and D-Jack and um, Greg Ward, a guy who's tremendously successful for us and drafting J.J. last year. And even some of these young guys, you know, just in that last game that we played against the Giants, you know, I think of Deontay Burnett and the play he made and, you know, Robert Davis made a couple plays and got young guys like Sheldon. So, 
we added a ton of competition and, you know, for us, we didn't want to just take one shot at it. Uh, someone said in the midst of a pick when we were deciding whether to double back up after we took high tower with Quez, who, you know, we had really stacked very similar to high tower. It's, you know, let's take this weakness, this team speed weakness and make it a strength because we evaluated this player as more than worthy of the pick we're taking. So why not do that, you know, and have hopefully some hard decisions to make on our roster and uh, with the increased roster size and some of the things there, then we're open to having the best players. Howie, I know you've talked about Jalen Hurts a ton, but I'd like to talk about the group in that quarterback room. You've got four quarterbacks with Carson leading the way. What do you think you have right now with that foursome? Well, we got four guys who are tremendous teammates and competitors who can really help each other prepare. And obviously that's led by Carson and um, the expectations for us with Carson, who, uh, you know, you know what he did last year with that young group and leading us at the end of the year, that 4-0 record on our way to winning the NFC East and what kind of player he is and um, the talent that now, you know, hopefully we've surrounded him with, which is so important. Uh, But that's always going to be a priority for us, you know, having – having a strong quarterback room and it's just what we prioritize. And, um, you know, just because something hasn't been done before doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing. And we're, we're trying to uh, be aggressive and make sure that we're doing whatever we can to protect our football team. And, uh, that room's going to start it. it. It's how we started this, you know, um, and how we're going to end up being, we're going to be strong at that position. I remember when we, extended Sam and then gave Chase that big backup quarterback deal and then trade all those picks for Carson. There was a lot of the same criticism about kind of overdoing at the quarterback position. And, you know, I think a couple of years later, you saw other teams kind of doing that kind of model. And um, it's just what we think is a huge priority. And it, we just want to be incredibly strong. And when we look at it, you know, it's hard to find these guys, even as backups, on the third day of the draft, like history just isn't too kind to those kind of things. And, and quite frankly, we haven't had a lot of success in, on the third day of the draft with, with quarterbacks. So when we look at the combination about, you know, Jalen and, and Kayvon, if we're going to take a guy in the fourth round like that, that's a combination that, that we're proud of and we're excited about. Linebacker Howie, you added two in the draft, Davion Taylor, Sean Bradley, as a group adding to Nathan Gary and Edwards, et cetera. Uh, Duke Riley, what do you think you have a linebacker as a group? Athleticism. Uh, I think when you look at that group as a whole, you're talking about athleticism and speed. And and we talked about it again. Uh, it's hard in this league if you can't match up because coordinators find the weakness and they, they find a way to get those guys matched up. And, um, you know, TJ Edwards is a guy that we're extremely excited about. He's He's just got tremendous football instincts. Um, when you went back and watched all of his snaps last year, he's got pop at the point of attack, and, and he's going to get an opportunity here to go with some of those other guys that you mentioned. Howie, we know that the offensive line is really good, the five starters, but you're always adding young players to create depth and competition. So looking at that group, do you feel like you rounded it out in this draft, taking two players? Yeah, losing Big V is a loss to our football team, you know, and we ha- we have to replace that kind of guy, and, and we're very optimistic that Jack Driscoll can do that. Um, he played right tackle at Auburn. Um, we think he can play really if he needed all five spots. He can snap as well. And then you know, Prince falling up to us in the sixth round. Here's a guy who played left tackle in the SEC, at, you know, playing some of the pass rushers who were drafted extremely high in this draft and he's got the feed and athleticism to do it. And when we talked to our doctors and you know, our performance staff led by Ted, uh, they said this guy's got still got uh, power in his knee. They signed off on it as well. And so we're excited to get him. Howie, two positions that you did not draft running back and cornerback. How do you look at those two positions? Well, we really try to address corner in the free agent market, you know, we think Darius Slay is one of the top corners in the national football league and feel incredibly fortunate to get him. And really when you look at this draft with the third and the fifth round pick we gave up for him, you know, you could say that he's part of this draft class. And then Nickel Roby Coleman's another guy that we think has been playing like top five nickel corner. 
uh, in the National Football League. And when we looked at that at that depth chart, and we we had some guys that we were looking at in the draft that just didn't fall that way, but we feel good about that. And then we picked up a couple guys after the draft that running back that we had draftable grades on, and Michael Warren and even Adrian Killens, who, who's Bolt Lightning, another fast guy. Um, I think he's 10, four, 300 meter day, which is just incredible. And, uh, and then we'll keep looking, you know, we'll keep looking at talent acquisition season has not ended. We, we still have ways to continue to improve our team. Yeah. That's a good segue, Howie, because we know you're always looking. So what actually does happen right now? How active do you think the Eagles can be? I know you've got some salary cap room reportedly. Um, will do you anticipate a lot of veterans, being released from other teams and the Eagles having an opportunity, should they choose to improve the roster more? Well, we'll be ready. We'll be ready, Dave. I think that if we get an opportunity to add to our team and people who fit what we're looking for as a player, as a person, we're going to be open to that. And I, and I think that's exactly right, Dave. After the draft ends, it's not like we're going on vacation. Uh, we're still working. Uh, we're still looking at every option. And that's how we transition, you know, Sunday, just really trying to get the depth chart right and figure out and look at it and study it and say, hey, this, these are the areas that now we need to look at addressing um, if there's a possible fit for us. And the last couple of days kind of going over free agents out there, making sure our grades are updated and uh, continue to be active. You know, um, we want to be ready to roll whenever they give us the green light to do that. And our job is to make sure that our coaches are in the best possible position in terms of depth and in terms of talent on the football team. Last one for you. Uh, we are in a virtual off-season program. Can you talk about exactly what that is? Describe what that is so the fans can have some sort of picture in their minds here, because that's the way life's going to be here for the next couple of months, it seems. Yeah, it sure seems like that, Dave. You know, um, Coach Peterson had a team meeting yesterday at 11 o'clock. There are 125 people, I think, on that. Um, just shows the dedication of our coaches and our players. And he talked about the opportunity, the opportunity in front of us to really come together and keep connecting with one another so that when we're alive with each other, when we're face to face, you know, we've we've started developing those bonds and and pushing one another and realizing that maybe not everyone in the National Football League is doing that right now. Maybe some people are taking this as an opportunity to have a little bit more free time, a little bit more vacation. But the teams that are going to come together, the teams that are going to work the hardest, are going to be the ones that are able to play deep into December, January, and hopefully even February. And I thought that message was unbelievable, as usual, on point by Coach Peterson. And, um, you know, I think our players really took it to heart. And I know just talking to Ted about our first day of the virtual offseason program was great. Howie, thank you so much. Great job through the weekend. Keep up the good work. And uh, we're here anytime you want to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. Come on over here. Yeah, same, Dave. You know, I, I think that uh, this beer that you got, that you're, you're not coming back until we get back to NovaCare. I, I just want to check in, you know, periodically and just see, like, what's it going to look like at some point? Is it going to be Kelsey-like? You know, is that is that what we're going to be doing? <laughs> is it just going to be like, I've never had you know, the, the – is it just going to be like scrub or are you just going to take down? You know, you want to have a competition for charity, me versus you, should I never shave till we get back to? Let's see. And then yeah, we'll sure. And get I'm up for that. Beer. That's not a bad uh, idea. I've sense. never had facial hair, so I'm up for it, man. I, I, don't, know, I don't know how to do it. I don't know you what look, to do with this look, thing. You're looking good, man. Stay safe to all our fans. Stay <laughs> safe. You. And, you know, just excited about the opportunity that we had last week. And thanks, Dave. Thanks, Howie. My son played football all the way up till ninth grade. And then a broken collarbone, a broken leg, a broken wrist ended the career. But it was so fun to get the family together to watch him play for the Rose Tree Colts and the Haverford Youth Football Program and the Little Quakers. And when he scored a touchdown, you know that I was jumping up and down. And when the Eagles were on the road and I couldn't make it, I found out the play-by-play -play as it happened. It was a thrill. So multiply that by a million, and you know how Monte Rager feels. Monte Rager with the Eagles in the 2007 season, came back in 2011 in the summer as a minority intern coach, and Philadelphia has never been gone too far from his heart. Now, he's literally got part of his heart here. In the form of first-round draft pick Jalen Rager, 
who on Thursday night last week heard his name called by NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. The Philadelphia Eagles select Jalen Rager, wide receiver, TCU. Well, this is a player and a name, guys, who has been rising up a lot of draft boards since the end of the season. And if you're thinking, Rager, Rager, that name sounds familiar, you are 100% correct. His father, Monte Rager, was a defensive end who played nine years in the NFL. But Rager, 5'10", almost 5'11", 206 pounds. And there you see Monte Rager. And he was a guy whose job it was to get to the quarterback. And he put together a little pro day workout that he sent around to videos. And Michael Irvin, a lot of people were very impressed with Jalen Rager. I caught up with Monte to find out what it's like to have your son go number one. Monte, I got I got You have to walk me through to begin. What was it like on Thursday night? Man, Dave, it was um, it was surreal. It 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 was like um, you know, it wasn't like you're in a twilight zone, but you were like, could this really be happening? And like, it's about to happen. It has happened. So it was a wave of emotion. Uh, I'm truly grateful that you know Jalen is coming into a story franchise you know, on the great leadership of some great coaches and management and people in the front office that start his career. It's going to be uh, very, very, very exciting. And I know he's excited. And as a father who played there and that played the game and played it in Philadelphia, I know what he's going into. And I know the, I know what, I know the level of expectation that's needed to play in Philadelphia. And I understand the mindset and the focus of the whole program. So um, it's, it was very exciting. And, you know, still to this day, it's like, wow, this has really happened. At what point did you think Jalen was really good at football? I knew he were, was uh, his fr- after his sophomore year. I figured, you know, because he changed his mindset about it. Because people don't know, he he is truly a good basketball player, too. And I thought he was just going to choose basketball. But he changed his mind and said, Dad, you know, I want to switch from running back to receiver because I, I think I can do a lot more and I can last to play a lot lot longer and he just transformed his body uh worked on his hands and Dave he became a great receiver um elevated his work ethic and and everything and I knew like going into his sophomore year I was like yeah he's going to he's going to become become something and you know he's done a great job of conditioning in himself and preparing and um we, are, we look where we are now at what point in his life Monte could he take you in basketball or in any sport, did he take me? When he when he when he gave you a beat down on the court. Oh man, Dave, I I ain't never let him beat me. Now, now he may have scored a lot of points on me, but I foul him every time before I let him beat me. So we <laughs> always this is how we 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 always quit when I was in the lead. That's how we did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you tell him about playing in Philadelphia? It's certainly a unique place to play. I told him I said the fans there they love their game. They love passionate players. They love players that's going to give their all. They love players that's going to represent the city of Philadelphia well. And um, I told him just go up there with a business-like mindset. Understand that it's not going to always be um, high. It's not going to always be low. But no matter what you do, get to the middles to where you can uh, stay focused and your mind is regulated so that you can perform at a high level. And I just told him that, hey, the fans are going to love you some days and some days they're not. But at the end of the day, you just go give it all you have, and they will appreciate that you're fighting and, and never quitting, and you know and they will they will love you to death. I wonder when you know Roger Goodell said Jalen's name. Who do you think was more excited in that room with your family? You, his mom, <laughs> uh, Jalen. Who who was who was the craziest? Oh my gosh, man! I, Jalen was nervous the entire time. I think I was more excited because it's just as a father. It's, you know, I'm truly grateful, man. And I want him to go do over and beyond what I did and have a better career than what I did. I think I was probably the most excited and, you know, along with his mom. But I think he was more nervous and was in shock. And I don't really think it really set in on him until the next day. And he said, Dad, I'm a Philadelphia Eagle. He said, and I'm ready to go do it. And I was like, yes, sir. It's real now. So go make it a career. That's awesome. That's a, will we see you in Philadelphia? Well, if fans are allowed to be there in 2020, that's the plan. You know that I'm going to, I still have a great relationship with everyone there. Um, I love the city of Philadelphia. And I was there and 
it'll be good to see everyone. And like I say, I know pretty much all the coaches that's there and all the the people that's in the front offices. And so, you know, they didn't do nothing but treat me well when I was there. And it'll be good to see everyone along with yourself. Monte, can't wait to see you. Thanks so much for your time. Congratulations. It must be an awesome feeling to have a son who's a first-round draft pick in the NFL. It's it's truly amazing. And like I said earlier, Dave, I'm grateful and thankful. And uh, we know it's all by God's grace. Thanks, man. Thanks so much. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. And finally, here on the Eagles Insider Podcast, presented by Lincoln Financial Group, the Eagles acquired defensive end Matt Leo on Monday as part of the NFL's International Player Pathway Program. That's the same program that developed offensive tackle Jordan Mailata before the Eagles drafted him in 2017. The Eagles receive a roster exemption for Leo through the cut down to 53 players on September 5. And at that point, the Eagles can place Leo on the active roster, the practice squad, or place on an international practice squad exemption. Okay, so if they choose the exemption, he remains there for the entire 2020 season and cannot be activated for the 53-man roster. It is a long journey for Leo, who already knows what that's like. He's 6'7", 275 pounds. He grew up in Australia and decided, after playing rugby and Australian rules football, that he wanted to give the NFL a chance, just like so many Australian players have. He played in junior college first, and then spent three years at Iowa State. In the last two seasons, Leo had 11 and a half tackles for loss, three sacks. He was a first-team academic All-Big 12 selection, and he compiled a 4.0 GPA in his final semester to complete his bachelor's degree in liberal studies. He spoke with Chris McPherson from PhiladelphiaEagles.com earlier this week, and Leo understandably blown away by the chance to compete at the highest level of professional football. You had a a job and everything lined up for you in Australia. You were good to go there, but yet you come to the U.S. and you earned a college degree, you got yourself a scholarship, and now you've landed on an NFL team. It was – it's crazy. It honestly feels like I've lived two lives. I um, – it, it's it's not even I, – I lived a, a workman, you know, life that gets up. I got up every morning at 3.30 a.m. and lifted before I would go into the work site. My dad would ask me why I did it, and I didn't even know why, but I just knew that someday me getting up and working out at 3.30 so I could be on the work site by 5.50 a.m. was going to pay off one day. And, you know, that – it's just to me, it's unreal. I have a degree now. I, you know, I finished my semester there. I graduated on a four point oh when I left. You got a four. Um, you got a you got a four point oh. So yeah, for the semester, I graduated with an all American academic, all American. So, so I that to me graduating graduating on a four point oh for was just a, a good fit way. It was just a blessing for me to feel like, yeah, I just I I left my plumbing company on you know on amazing terms where they offered a job and I wanted to leave Iowa State in the same way. Um, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly close to my head coach still. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a blessing. And I now I want to have that, you know, with, you know, the Eagles now and this organization. I want to leave a good, incredible impact and bring, you know, positive energy to the world. Uh, Matt, you've been very gracious with your time, and, and I'm sure you're going to be very excited to tell your family, your friends, and everyone else of this. Um, I guess one of my last questions is just what have you learned about yourself? You've talked a lot about pursuing your dreams and you know not letting anything get in the way, but can you just think back to when you were watching the Super Bowl, eating lunch, and thinking to yourself, that's, you know, I, that's what I wish I were doing, and, and now you're doing it, and you're playing for a team that won the Super Bowl just a couple of years ago. <laughs> Words can never describe this feeling. Um, like, honestly, you know, the feeling that comes to my own mind is almost tears. It's, it is tears. You know, it is, um, yeah, it is. I, I could never thank the people enough that helped me get here as well. I was just one person that was willing to chase and persevere for this train. Um, never wanted to accept no or not good enough. Um, but yeah, I thank everyone who had come into my life or just believed in me enough and just contributed in any way, shape or form for me to get here today. 
And that will do it for this Eagles Insider podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro with you. Thanks so much to Peter Kelly for putting everything together. Ray Doyle for his work as well. And thanks to you for joining us for each and every episode. Please feel free to give us some sort of a rating. We prefer a five-star rating on the Apple Podcasts. We are going to keep this going for you all the way through the offseason. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining. Have yourselves a great Eagles day. Fly, Eagles, fly. And everyone, continue to be safe and healthy as we get ready for 2020 Eagles style.